bring our robots to do a demonstration in the middle of the presentation? Yeah, so we can, sure. We can play this uh, in that one uh, outlet? Yes, okay. yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Leonardo's stage this afternoon. Uh, first up, we have Alessandro Di Mero, and he will be talking about how technology can help the nervous system and how the nervous system can inspire technology. Thank you. Hi, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much for the introduction. Can you hear me okay? Yes? Mark. So, um, my name is Alessandro De Mauro. I'm an Italian engineering engineer, and I worked uh, now in, uh, at Vicontec, uh, a research foundation located in Spain. Just a brief uh, introduction. Um, I got my master's degree in uh, computer science at the University of Lecce in Italy. Then I moved in Germany, first in uh, Heidelberg at a uh, clinical university. And then I got my PhD at the uh, University of Karlsruhe, at the Institute for Process Control and Robotics. After that, I moved in uh, uh, Vicontech, which is a research foundation. And uh, I would like to start my presentation uh, from there. The agenda uh, will be an introduction. And then we will uh, talk a bit about technology, technology in the field of neuroscience. And then I will describe two projects in this, uh, in this field, the Hyper project and the Silegans project. Then we will, um, we will make some conclusion, and uh, I will leave you uh, the possibility for a question and answer, of course. So please, uh, um, I ask for your participation at the end. Bicontech is, as I said, a non-profit non research center located in Spain. We work about multimedia, computer graphics. Uh, we have different uh, departments. And uh, we work in the middle, let's say, between industries and uh, basic research. So um, we, uh, from one end, we work for uh, products in the sphere of uh, computer graphics. And from another, we do basic research with the university, too. We have different departments, as I said, uh, digital TV and multimedia services, biomedical application, e-health, uh, e-tourism, and cultural heritage. Then we have intelligent transport system and engineering, 3D animation and interactive virtual environments, uh, uh, human speech and language technologies. As you can see, uh, different departments, but uh, they are all uh, sharing the same technology. Um, which are here represented, augmented and virtual reality, image processing, visualization, semantic data mining, service integration technologies, natural language and speech, speech processing, multimedia flow management. Uh, all these technologies, of course, are in common with all the departments. And if you are, uh, let's say, as we are so excited about this technology, please feel free to um, apply to our job position. And at the same, um, same stage, I would like to invite you, if you have any idea that you think can be in the future, why not a product or a, or a very cool uh, research project. So please be free to contact us because we work uh, uh, on the ideas of everybody. So the title of this presentation uh, was about uh, nervous system and technology, reality technology. The title was a bit com complicated, let's say. I hope that you are not scared like, uh, like I am, actually, for the title. And I hope at the end of my presentation you are uh, able to, uh, to, to understand my, my points. So I will talk about neuroscience and technology that you can use in, in, this, in this field. Let's start from the basics, the nervous systems. It is the part of the animal's body that coordinates, let's say, voluntary and involuntary actions. So everything we do every day, walking, chatting, uh, speaking, and so on. The, neuro, um, the nervous system is defined by a presence of a special cell, which are called the neurons. And the brain is in the center of this neuro, uh, nervous system. 
these neurons are a lot. So let's say in our, uh, in the human body, usually um, they are more than uh, 85 billions. So as you can imagine, it's a big net of special cells. And of course, the nervous system for this reason is very complicated. But this uh, complexity somehow can offer different um, uh, challenges, everything we do, as I said. So how it works, uh, uh, now I'm not a neuroscientist, but just some basics again. Again, so the neurons are uh, um, exchanging information using electric impulse. And um, they are connected in a, in a wire, in a, in a net. So what happens is that everything, every, every time we, we think something or we think to move a part of our body and we are moving or we are reacting to some external stimuli, there is one, this elec electric, uh, um, somehow electric activity in our nervous system. It's not only an electric activity because some of the neurons um, they uh, exchange information using chemicals. So let's say there are some uh, um, specific chemicals which are, which are called uh, neurotransmitters uh, and they can uh, exchange the form of, uh, um, of collaboration. They can use uh, signals, electric signals, and then they can shift to chemical uh, energy and then can be, come back to electric sig signals again. So it's impressive what we do every day. Of course, um, brain and spinal cord are uh, involved in all this process. And when everything is okay, we don't have any problem. But if something happens, then uh, we have one of the diseases in this area, which are uh, the cerebrovascular accidents, also called uh, stroke, spinal cord injury, and others like cerebral palsy. So if something is going very wrong, then uh, the life is changing, the life of the subject and the life of all the family. And I would say that the, the, the health medical system is really, uh, is really influenced by, uh, by, for example, some of these diseases like uh, the stroke, which is very uh, common in elderly people. So, how technology can help in this, in this field? This is an example of traditional therapy. As you can see, the, the patient is moving an object, in this case, a glass of water, and that's it. So this is what they have to do to rehabilitate. They have to repeat this action a lot of time. More you repeat, this is uh, already proven, proved, more, you, uh, more the rehabilitation is intensive, more you can, you have some, any chance to rehabilitate. But as you can see, it's very boring. And the motivation is another factor very important for the rehabilitation. So technology can help, actually. There is space for technology here. There are already uh, different technology proved in this field. One of the technologies is uh, robotics. Robotics is expensive, of course, but can permit to do a lot of stuff, like uh, can repeat an exercise a lot of time, can uh, assess the data very well. So the first candidate to be used in rehabilitation is robotics as technology. There are already different uh, commercial products, you can see here some examples like uh, Armeo, Power, Spring, and Locomat from Coma, or uh, Walkbot, uh, Army Robot, and so on. There is a lot of uh, research in this area too. And let, let's say they are already accepted. The only exception is the cost. They are uh, somehow expensive. Another technology that can be used in, uh, uh, for this type of disease uh, related to neuroscience is the brain-computer interface. Brain-computer interface uh, is already an active field since um, a lot of years. There are different types of brain-computer interfaces. They work uh, in a similar, uh, similar way. So they can uh, um, 
detect electric signal in, the, in a certain area of the brain. And so you can analyze the patient or the subject, and you can understand where is, for example, a specific injury. This is the case, more the case of the implantable brain-computer interfaces, which are already, um, they work very good, they have very good resolution, but of course they have some, uh, um, um, they have to be inserted use, uh, using uh, brain uh, surgery, so it's, it's not so simple. There are already commercial uh, brain-computer interfaces, let's say, evoluted, that are wireless and uh, uh, they can stay outside. They are non-invasive for the patient, like uh, this one on the, on the right. And then there are brain-computer interface, which are really um, low cost, not expensive. You can buy this type of uh, technology nowadays for uh, $100, no more. Um, this is interesting because uh, they can permit in the future to shift a part of rehabilitation at home. And this would be a great advantage for the patient and for the health system especially. Uh, this is just an example of how is active this field at the moment. Um, I found this news uh, last week. I have to, still uh, had no time to go inside the paper, but it looks very interesting. So some researchers from the University of Washington, they managed to connect two brains, which looked like uh, fiction, but science fiction, but it's not in a simple way, actually. They are using internet. They are using a brain-computer interface connected to one subject, and then internet to send the signal to another uh, PC. This other PC is connected to another device uh, in, this, in this neuroscience field, which is called transmagnetic, transmagnetic stimu stimulation which is this one, which is able to use the magnetic field to induce electric uh, modification in the brain. So to influence the neurons in particular, in particular regions. You can, since the, the, the stimulation is very uh, low level, it's based on a very uh, low level, um, low uh, electric uh, signals, you cannot do uh, a lot of stuff, but it, they are enough to send, uh, for example, the command for, uh, to do a click on a mouse. And what they've done uh, is just to play one game in internet, connecting two, bra two brains. So they take the signals from one subject, which is looking at, uh, at a game, which is playing. Another subject is uh, in a separated area, in, a, in another geographical uh, site, and uh, the PC in this site receives the signals, send the signals to the um, transmagnetic stimulator, and this subject, the last subject, can do a click without, without see the, the game. So I think it is amazing. It's just, uh, as at, at the moment, I don't see the application in rehabilitation, but it's something really amazing that it's a warranty that uh, this field is very active at the moment. Another technology that we can use in uh, rehabilitation is functional electrical simulation. Functional electrical simulation is working um, in a similar way again, so some electrodes uh, are, in, are positioned on the, on the patient uh, body, and they can stimulate the reaction of some nerves. So you can uh, uh, stimulate the muscles, for example, the muscles movement or the, bra the, um, the arm movement in general, the walking and so on. They can be used very well in combination with robotics. Another technology, and, uh, and I'm very familiar with this one, is the game technology, let's say virtual reality. As we say, the patient motivation is on the base for uh, each type of rehabilitation from um, motor disease. So we know exactly how uh, game technology can uh, um, stimulate the motivation. I don't have to explain it to you. They are accessible. Each of us probably has a game console at home because they are low cost too. And they provide a precise assessment. This is another important point. So 
as you can see, in contrary with the traditional therapy, nowadays we can take a big amount of data from the rehabilitation. We can access if the patient is reacting and how is reacting to our treatment, let's say, to the therapy. This is very important. This is something that you can do with robotics too. We can calculate the position of the joints. For this reason, uh, um, the, the project I was going to present today is the Hyper project, which was funded because uh, we are trying to put together different technology like uh, um, neuroprosthetics, uh, um, robotics, and virtual reality to obtain faster results and better results. Why faster? Because uh, it's proved that rehabilitation has to start as soon as possible with the patient, so, you, so the patient has more chance to rehabilitate completely. And with the use of different technology, probably we can obtain different results. The partners involved in this uh, project are the uh, Consejo Superior de Investigación Científica, the IBEC, uh, La Universita, the University of Zaragoza, the University of Carlos III Madrid, uh, other uh, research foundations like uh, CIDETEC, Tecnalia, and Vicontech, and the two hospitals the Hospital for Spinal Core Injuries and uh, uh, the University of Ray Juan Carlos with the Lambecom Laboratory. So a typical setup of our, uh, let's say, uh, platform is this one. As you can see, uh, the subject is uh, wearing a brain-computer interface. So from this we can uh, have some information about the time in which he's thinking to move something. So let's think, for example, to the patients that are almost paralyzed. Uh, in this period, uh, you can just uh, uh, have some information about what is thinking, but you will not see any activity in the neuromuscular system. So this information is important because can activate other technology like the functional electrical stimulation. And so together with the robot, the, our patient can uh, somehow play with a video game that you can see here on the left. So different technology for the same problem. Of course, all this technology has to be uh, related with one phase of the rehabilitation because there are different phases, there are different diseases, of course. So different setup for each phase and, this, um, and each disease. This is a big, um, uh, what the research we are doing now, we are not only let's say developing technology, we are testing technology, we are developing even evaluation scales, because when you have new technology, then you have to evaluate the, um, uh, the, you have to validate the technology or the therapy you are proposing compared to the traditional one. For the traditional one, you have uh, some scale evaluation to compare. When you are using new technology, you have to write down and validate new evaluation scales. So the project is very, very, very complex. We are trying to, uh, this year we, we start with all the experiments on the, on the real patients. So I uh, hope to come back uh, with publications so, uh, soon about the results. I would like just to give you uh, an overview about the use of virtual reality. And so the games, we connected the virtual reality environments with all these uh, technologies with the brain-computer interfaces, with, um, a functional, with the robot, as you can see you down, down here on the, on the right, uh, with other um, device we are using, like uh, a carpet, a sensor, sensorized carpet, to understand and estimate the center of mass of the patient, because this, those type of patient has to rehabilitate even the balance So we are doing this, and uh, we are doing the. Uh, we are providing the doctors with a reasonable user interface, in which they can decide uh, in each phase of the intervention when and how to use uh, the robot, how to use the functional electrical stimulation, and so on. They can somehow uh, adjust the the support of, of all this technology 
considering the patient uh, um, progress too. And this is a video showing you the, the virtual reality uh, environments and uh, games that we are, uh, we are developing. We start using Kinect to make some proof of concept. And then we, uh, as we can see uh, in, uh, in the last, uh, as we can see uh, forward, we are using uh, as uh, input for the virtual reality environment, uh, for example, the position of the, of the joints of the robot. Okay, these are exercises to training the balance. You can see the center of the mass of the um, patient. He has to somehow to, to train it there. Okay, we start uh, here again the, some proof of concept with uh, um, game technology available on the market. We, in this case. And then we connect uh, the exoskeleton we have in our lab. So you can have uh, a precise tracking of the, of the patient, the representation of the patient. The patient, of course, is training uh, with a video game, once again. We can repeat the different uh, movements, the movements that are important for uh, each phase. You see? Okay. And then we, um, we are working a lot about user interface because, as I said, the doctors need to, um, to have a nice user interface to, to, to check the therapy, the, the, the progress of the patient, and so on. This video is really too long, so I will uh, jump a bit. This. You can see, you can set all the um, devices are involved in this particular therapy we are developing. Uh, here you can decide where to put the functional electrical stimulation electrodes, for example. Then you can decide uh, everything. You can adjust the patient, the patient need. You can have uh, in real time uh, an estimation, an assessment of the uh, rehabilitation why the patient is uh, training and so on. okay at the end of this uh, presentation we will have a short demo with the robot um, because demo are always entertaining so we prepare one demo with the exoskeleton too. And you will see another presentation about robotic from the keynote speak, speech um, from Professor um, Jose Luis Pons. He will present at five o'clock uh, all the details of this robotic development. Now let's shift from one project to another. So as we said, uh, Technology can help uh, in uh, neurorehabilitation in general uh, for uh, neuroscience-related uh, disease. It is possible, uh, this is uh, why I'm presenting this, uh, this project too, it is possible to take advantage from, uh, from the nature, from the biology, to improve the technology. This is the question. And this is the case of the next project I'm presenting. The title is, uh, the, the name of the project is Sea Elegance. And we are going to there to emulate the C. elegans nervous system. C. elegans is a worm. It's a very simple biological entity. I will explain why we start with this. This is um, one of the main concepts. So let's say, why at the moment some small biological entity is able to do a lot of stuff that our computer cannot do? Why in some small brain we can have, have this type of activity like a complex pattern recognition or a navigation in 3D from this small entity? So why? We, we saw before uh, how the neurons are working, but still something is missing because we cannot at the moment simulate their brain. We are not able to do it. 
There are a lot of projects in the area and uh, there is a, um, at, at the moment there are a lot of money in, in that um, European community and the US government, for example, they are spending on, the, on this field. There is the one project called the uh, Human Brain Project, which is, a, a, which is a flag initiative from the European community. And uh, from on the other side, on, uh, in US, there is uh, this brain initiative from the Obama government. So this is somehow um, a trend for the, for the future. Why? Because still we cannot simulate it. What you can see here is uh, how this worm is moving and some of the features. We know everything of this worm. So biologists, have, uh, they have done a lot of work in this area. So we know exactly the size is one millimeter. Uh, it has always 300, 302 neurons. He has uh, 5,000 synapses, uh, 95 muscles. Uh, we know everything of this worm, but still we cannot simulate. We cannot simulate, for example, the interaction with, um, with the arena which is moving. We cannot simulate the neuromuscular, neuromuscular interaction. Why? Because probably something is still missing, because probably we are not able to simulate it completely. We cannot simulate this, the complex uh, behavior even if the neuro, neuro, neuro system in this case is very, very simple. So 300 neurons. In our brain, there are uh, 85 billions of neurons. So starting from this consideration, and uh, um, we know exactly that from the simplest uh, nervous system uh, to that of a human, the basic principles are the same even if the implementation is different. And we know that surprisingly, even simple biological neural networks, like uh, that one for, for the C. elegans, uh, they can perform, outperform today's fastest computational systems in tasks such as sensory pattern recognition and locomotional control. The, this world may hold the key to brain-like computer architecture. So what we would like to do is to simulate, to replicate exactly how is moving, think, and everything. This is objective. And the other objective is to create uh, an, a web platform where each biologist can try there all the theories, because the theories are not enough, are not enough uh, proved, let's say. When we prove it, then we can think to have uh, a, to change scale and to understand how, uh, if we can, uh, uh, let's say, generalize this approach to other entities. And at the end, uh, we hope to, to reach in the future of, uh, I don't know, many hundred, hundreds of years, the human brain, so the replication of the human brain. How we would like to simulate it uh, by using hardware, using FPGA. We are going to assign, we, we are, um, at the moment we are building the, um, the hardware architecture, assign one, for one uh, neuron, for, for each of the neurons, one FPGA. FPGA is uh, um, a computational entity, let's say, uh, it's field programming gate array, it's a sort of uh, CPU that can be reprogrammable. So you can uh, reprogram the, um, all the connections too, and it's very scalable. So for this reason, we assign e for each uh, neuron entity one uh, uh, FPGA. So we are building these big spheres in which all the neurons will interact one with, with the other. They are going to use uh, light or sounds. We are still evaluating the two approaches. They are going to use a multicolored beamer or, uh, or sounds, different frequencies, of course. And we hope at the end to provide this uh, real-time sensory motor feedback loop. So each of the biologists can connect from, uh, from the office, can test some theory, can run the simulation in this uh, very big uh, hardware 
and then got back the game, and then with the results, propose other, other, other theory or something like that. So the conclusion is that the recent, in, the recent introduction of new technologies provides a number of challenges in uh, neuroscience and a number of benefits for the specific field of neurorehabilitation and not only. In order this technology to be more effective, we should continue to explore how the natural works because still something is missing. Get closer to its complexity and perfection by simulation. This is the main challenge. So the main challenge is to understand the nature before develop the technology we need. Let me thank uh, all the groups involved in these two research. So uh, all the group of uh, Hyper and, uh, and the group of C Elegance. Let me thank Telefonica for this uh, big opportunity. And now should be the time for the demo. Ah, yes. Magdo is coming here with the exoskeleton that you can see. You can go slowly, no problem. We are not in hurry. <laughs> and uh, okay, you can uh, you can have a, a brief look to this uh, robotic exoskeleton we developed. They developed at Sesic uh, for uh, in the frame of this hyper project. Uh, of course, uh, more details uh, will come with the next presentation at 5 o'clock from the coordinator of the project, uh, Jose Luis Pons. At this time, uh, I finish my presentation. If you have any question, please feel free to... Magdo? So I just would like to ask about the skeleton. So it's for rehabilitation, right? Yeah. And what exactly? It's, for, uh, it's looking how the body is moving and sending it to computer and it's helping the body to move? There are some yes. motors or...? It's as, it, this is uh, it's assisting the movement. So it's not creating the movement. It's just assisting. So when the intention to move is uh, detected, then it's, it's moving. Oh, so it's connected with the nervous system somehow? No, at the moment not. So let's say this is, uh, um, is somehow uh, fr from, the, from the balance of the, the subject and from the movements is, is, is uh, starting to do. Here, uh, the, the, the exoskeleton can assist this movement, mm -hmm. so providing some action, let's say. Yeah. Uh, I think the best person to answer is, is Magdo, actually. Do you have any other comments on this? No, it's okay. Given a presentation. Okay. Uh, Jose Luis, uh, we're given a presentation about the, the exoskeleton at the five o'clock in the in the Galileo stage. So you can we can ask more details about the exoskeleton in his presentation. Okay. And uh, then another question about the Psi project or the C elegance. The, yeah, C elegance about the brain. So this one you are building now the brain, so it will be finished soon, right? Or we are already we started since uh, four months. So okay, so it's already working the brain. Yes, somehow. yes. No, uh, we, I mean we started now, so we yeah. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we still have to build the hardware, for example. We worked uh, already in uh, in, the, um, in uh, let's say collect all the requirements the biolo biologist wants, and we are working in this direction. The project has a duration of three years, so right. let's say we, we have time. And is it like part of the human brain project or no, is no, it no. standing alone? No, it's not part of the human brain project. It was approved in a FET a proactive initiative, so it's a future energy technology up, um, project. But it is not part of the, the human brain project. Actually, we are not, uh, we are not uh, dealing with the human brain, so it's... Uh, we are a bit outside, yeah, but even uh, if we are uh, we are observing uh, one, uh, let's say one simplification, and yeah. we are doing we are replicating there something similar. So, yeah. Yeah. but for me it seems that we have to first understand the worm before we can yes. build the brain, so that they would need your maybe re research yes. for. This is what we we think as well, and we hope to have a collaboration with them uh, at a certain point. Human brain project is is very big, so. 
Okay. So you believe that it's possible, like, I think it's human brain project is like 10 years long should be, or uh, to like in the end really simulate, like that, yeah. I mean, uh, we hope so, Europe uh, and the US too, I mean, we hope to, to do it, even if it's, it's really challenging, so there is always there something missing, so even if we know a lot of theories, no, they are not enough, as I said, we, they, we and they should work a lot, Yeah, because there are a lot of mysteries still in the brain, and uh, to have a technology that can reproduce these... Uh, behaviors, we should understand everything, so yeah. from the basics. Uh, hi, um, I have a question. Um, um, looking for some information and in some courses, uh, I've seen that um, a lot of the information that is available and a lot of the research that uh, people is using uh, sometimes, sometimes are based on research it's from maybe the 1950, 1960, like very, 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 very old researches. And it looked for me that the bases are really uh, based on something that is really, really old. I had that impression. Is that the same for you? I think the same. Uh, let's say we have today different uh, technology, of course, different possibilities, especially in terms of cost, I would say. But still, the principle are still there. I mean, I don't know how many, uh, Magdo, how many new results we have in robotics in the last uh, 20 years, uh, let's say. The main concepts are always the same. You're right in this. Because it, it, looks, for, it looks for me that, um, that uh, a new research or a new approach or try to redefine again the basics it's needed. Be, uh, I don't know about something. I was re uh, doing some courses about neuro, uh, neuro ne ne the neuromuscular system, mm -hmm. and everything was based on something, on some diagrams, like the 1927 or something like that. Yes. It was, and even the teacher said that uh, there were some misunderstandings on uh, uh, the interpretation of those drawings. So, looked yes. like for me, but nobody has done another research. Uh, independently from those or something like that? It, it looks like everything is based to something very old. I think they are doing a lot of research in the field. The problem is there are still a lot of open questions. Everything related with the brain is still uh, a black box mm -hmm. in some points. And the information you have about this, uh, this worm is, uh, is um, new? Is, uh, fresh or it's also based on all the studies, all uh, uh, researches and so on? Um, there are a lot of, there is a lot of bibliography. I mean, it's something incredible how people is writing about this small worm that I, I didn't know. Uh, I think that uh, we know what we need to know at the moment. Now we need the platform to try new theories. Without this hardware uh, platform, we cannot. With simulation, with co this complete simulation platform, we, we cannot. We'll, uh, we stay there only on the paper. So mm. we should now test really if a very nice uh, simulation can replicate all the behaviors. Thank you. Uh, thanks for all. first thanks for your presentation. It was a really great picture of the future. Um, but it seems to me that at the beginning of it, it um, you focused more on rehabilitation of the human body. I mean, like healing it. And afterwards, at the end, it was more like substitution, substitution, and mm, not trying to heal it, but helping it, uh, like enhancing it with technology. So what do you think is going to be the future? Like healing it or substitution? That's a good question. I think the problem in, uh, with uh, new rehabilitation technologies is, once again, is the same. So we developed certain technologies, but still something is missing. And what is missing probably 
has to be inspired by the nature. This is the point of the, of the presentation, what I was trying to, to say. If we don't understand exactly how uh, the human or the animal brain uh, is working, then something is missing to create the right technology, in my opinion. So this is the missing point. We need to know something more. We need to test some uh, theories. I don't know if you got... I can understand that the title was really... The title of my presentation was really scaling. Uh, it's, it it's just because uh, afterwards the, the presentation was a bit like a dichotomy, you know? <laughs> yes. Okay. It was from another point of view, from in my... Uh, Thank you.